Hello again and happy Friday. WebCME wants you to start your weekend with a win. This week's clinical connection is diabetic foot ulcers and hyperbaric oxygen therapy. I recently received an email with a comment and a question. I have been watching your hyperbaric CME videos which are very well done. I do have a question with regards to the clinical cases for diabetic foot ulcers. In all cases, I did not appreciate the 30 days of not responding to maximal therapy before instituting hyperbaric oxygen. Can you give me some further guidance on this? Well, first of all, I want to thank you for that comment, and that's an excellent question. Very insightful. Well, coverage guidelines for the treatment of a patient with a diabetic foot ulcer are fairly straightforward. For diabetic wounds of the lower extremity, the Wagner classification of the wound and the failure of an adequate course, at least 30 days, of standard wound care therapy must be documented at the initiation of the hyperbaric treatment. We must demonstrate an ulcer with bone involvement, osteomyelitis, or localized gangrene, or gangrene of the entire foot. This translates to a Wagner 3, grade 3 or higher. We must document that standard wound care was performed, and this includes assessment of the patient's vascular status and documentation of correction of any underlying vascular problems, optimization of nutritional status, optimization of glucose control, debridement as required of devitalized tissues, maintenance of a clean, moist wound, want to maintain granulating tissue with appropriate moist dressings, appropriate offloading, treatment to resolve any infection that might be present. When the patient fails to respond to these standard wound care measures by showing no measurable signs of healing for at least 30 days, then we may consider hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Your question relates to patients that do not meet these criteria. For example, they present with a septic foot related to a recent ulcer. They are at high risk for amputation. Is hyperbaric indicated for this patient even though they may not have met the 30-day rule? Many times these patients have been seen elsewhere, even before coming to you. Remember, policy does not dictate that you have to care for this patient for the entire 30 days. Standard of care can be delivered by another provider or at another facility. In the case where the criteria clearly have not been met, don't forget to be an advocate for your patient. A call to the medical director of the patient's insurance carrier may provide a waiver and pre-authorization for hyperbaric oxygen care. However, when in doubt, the best answer is always do what is right for the patient, not what is right for reimbursement. While you may be denied payment, you will be able to sleep well at night. Well, we hope this edition of Clinical Connections will enhance your wound care practice. Be sure to send us your questions and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Enjoy a safe and relaxing weekend.